Behaviorism is the school of psychology that emphasizes the measurement and analysis of observable behavior. It emerges the reaction to ideas about psychoanalysis put forth by Freud, who focused on the importance of unconscious desires in shaping development. Behaviorists argue that psychology should only focus on observable, testable behavior, rather than on hidden structures like thoughts and feelings. Particularly, they focus their research on the ways that learning shapes our behavior. The first behaviorist was John B. Watson, who was influenced by the work of Ivan Pavlov. While conducting research on digestion, Pavlov discovered that dogs salivated when they heard sounds linked to the delivery of food, even when the food itself was not delivered. This led him to wonder if human behavior could also be shaped by environmental factors. In the famous Little Albert experiment, Watson conditioned an infant to avoid a harmless white rat by playing a frightening sound whenever Albert touched the rat. Albert learned this association between the rat and the sound, and eventually he cried and moved away from it whenever he saw the rat, or anything white and fluffy. This led Watson to conclude that environmental conditions and not internal drives could lead a child to be highly successful or not. B.F. Skinner expanded on Watson's work by focusing on the ways that rewards and consequences shape behavior. Much of his research involved training animals to engage in complex behaviors through careful control of their environments. For example, Skinner taught pigeons how to play table tennis by gradually rewarding them for the required behaviors one step at a time. Humanistic psychologists found both Freudian and behavioral approaches limiting. Rather than focusing on how past events or learning shaped people, humanistic psychology emphasized the potential for growth and change. They believed humans had free will and the ability to actively guide their own development and self-improvement. And while harsh environments and past events could cause emotional or behavioral problems, optimal growth required safety, love, and acceptance. Carl Rogers is considered the father of humanistic psychology. He believed that trust, warmth, empathy, and genuine relationships were all essential for the treatment of mental conditions, leading the way for client-centered therapy. Another early humanist was Abraham Maslow, who focused on the conditions that support optimal development. He is best known for his hierarchy of needs, where basic physical needs like safety must first be met in order to achieve self-actualization, the ability to become the best version of oneself. Another result of the backlash against behaviorism was cognitive psychology. These researchers agreed that while environment could shape behavior, thoughts, feelings, and other mental processes like memory, language use, and visual perception could also play an important role and could be studied scientifically. Their work was aided by technological advances that allowed them to conduct elaborate experiments, such as the ability to present a stimulus for just a few milliseconds or track eye movements or digitally alter a sound or an image. Some cognitive researchers, like Aaron Beck, used cognitive psychology in their clinical work. Beck developed Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, that helped treat people for depression and anxiety by helping them to replace unrealistic negative thoughts with more realistic ones. These days, cognitive psychology has grown into cognitive neuroscience, a field of study exploring how brain structures and functions influence thoughts, feelings, perceptions, and decision-making. While cognitive psychology included a lot of elements on the human condition that were missing from behaviorism, it still ignores a key part of our daily lives, social interactions. Social cultural theorists study how people behave in social situations and the social groups that they belong to. This stems from the work of Lev Vygotsky, who thought that individuals developed in part based on their interactions with the world around them. He suggested that personal development is influenced not only by one's personal beliefs, but also by their culture, for example, people who are raised in Western culture may differ in distinct ways from those raised in Eastern cultures, from their eating habits to their personality. Smaller social groups can also influence personal development and behavior. Leon Festinger devised social comparison theory, which argued that individuals evaluate themselves by comparing themselves to others, either those who they perceive as below them, which increases their self-esteem, or above them, which can inspire them to improve. As people become part of new social groups and leave others, their behaviors, beliefs, and values then shift accordingly. In the early days of psychology, it was difficult to establish connections between the brain and behavior. But discoveries in genetics, biology, neuroscience, and neuroimaging have spurred research into how biology, genes, brain structure, and brain function shape behavior. For example, brain scanning technology makes it possible to observe the brain in action 
Researchers can study which parts of the brain are involved in specific emotions or types of thinking. They can observe how brain activity before and after treatment differs. Taking all of this into account, many researchers focus on the biopsychosocial model, which considers the complex interactions between biological, psychological, and social factors in understanding behavior and mental states.